And that's one of the things that I started knowing about Dr. Summerall and, of course, about Smith Wigglesworth and John Lake and these different people is that they all had this same kind of characteristic of they refused to be boxed in and not allowed their faith to move forward. Faith is a choice. You can choose. But that choice means you choose what you listen to, you choose what you watch, you choose it. And like Wigglesworth wouldn't let a newspaper in his home, wouldn't listen to the radio, always spend his time in the Word. And people say, well, how did he get such great faith? Oh, it was an anointing. And Wigglesworth himself said, it's not an anointing. I choose to spend my time in the Word. He said, that's the source of faith. That faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so, but yet we think we can do it another way. And, and I'm telling you, the easy way is get in the Word and stay in the Word and live the Word and speak the Word and find somebody you can speak the Word with and speak the Word back and forth and live in it. And, it, and the thing is, you do that at first and it may seem like you're hitting against a wall itself. But whenever you move into it and you start to speak these things and they start happening, then you're like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And then, but you're not surprised. It's just awesome. And then you, and the, the thing is, though, when you start to speak to people's lives and you start telling them, you can get up. And they think, well, well you hadn't prayed for me. I don't have to pray for you. Right. It's my believing that counts. It's not, it's not the hands. It's believing. And, and me putting my hands on you is just proof that I'm believing. See, so I can believe and you can get healed without me saying anything, without me touching you. It's what I believe because believing is important. All the promises of God are to believers. Amen? Amen. And so it's that believing, but you have to decide this is the way it will be. And then you start speaking it. And when you speak it, you, you've already decided this is how it's going to be. And then it's, it comes to pass. And you can tell people, you don't need that. You don't need that. Uh, there was a lady up in uh, Denver, I think it was, I have to remember because we had healing services everywhere but there was a lady in Denver that uh, stood in line when we were going to pray for people and I went down the line and I saw that she had this uh, cane thing with her and she, it was hard for her to get up there I could tell when she was walking up there it was really hard for her to walk and when she got up there I, I just walked I'd already prayed for some people I walked by her and said do you need that you don't need that do you and she said she, she was looking for the right answer you could tell it's kind of like I do, but I'm not supposed to, you know, that kind of thing. And, and I said, here, give it to me. And she handed it to me. I said, no, we'll just walk. And she looked at me like, but you got to pray. You, you got to do something. And I'm like, no, we weren't saying this, but you could tell on her face. And so I'm holding the, the cane, and she just starts walking off and just walks. Then we were in, um, where were we? I'm trying to remember all these different places. Um, the lady that got out of the wheelchair. Where was that at? Salt Lake City, there we go, thank you, yes, Salt Lake City, uh, lady, um, oh yeah, because I, I, I called for terminal cases, terminal is not in God's vocabulary, it's in man's vocabulary, I said, if you've been diagnosed terminal, come up front, and we had like six people come up front, five or six people, one lady came over in a wheelchair, had an oxygen tank, the whole bit, had uh, what they said was fourth stage cancer, uh, very short time to live, and they wheeled her up there, and uh, so I just took her by the hands, and and her hands were ice cold. I mean, her body was shutting down. And so her hands were ice cold. And I just told her, I said, in the name of Jesus, get up. You're healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. I said, all right, what do you want to do? And she basically said she wanted to get up. I said, okay. So she got up. There was a guy there that was security that he picked up her. And I said, now you, you start walking. And so she started walking. And as they walked around, she got faster and faster and faster and ended up jogging. And the man, who was in perfect health, was carrying her oxygen stuff behind her and was running behind her trying to keep up with her while she was running. And this woman couldn't even walk in there. Amen? And so she's running. Now, now listen, I didn't feel anything. And, and I'm training myself even more so to purposely not try to feel anything. To, to, to not look for anything. Why? Because it's his word. Yeah. Right. His word is what counts. It's the word. If you want to talk, well, that person's anointed. That per Listen, if you want to use that terminology, fine. But a person is only anointed to the degree they are speaking God's word. Because the power is in his word. Amen. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Do you get it? The gospel, the good news, the word of God. God has exalted his word even above his own name. Meaning that, and he hastens to perform it. In other words, he watches over his word to perform his word. You want to know where faith is? It's in the word. You get in the word, you get the word in you. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word's abide in you, you'll ask whatever you will and it'll be done. And so there is a, when you walk in his faith, you can decide 
what's going to happen. It'll be this way. And I can decide if I'm going to lay hands on them, if I'm going to speak. I decide all that. I, make a, I, I, just, I choose. Now, some people, they say, well, when I get there, Brother Curry's going to do this. And they have it set. And usually, when that happens, the Holy Spirit, he doesn't always tell me this is what that person's done. But as I notice, I will tell this person to do this, and then that person, I'll go lay hands on them. Why? Because that's what their, where their faith was set. And it's the Holy Spirit that leads and guides and, and lets you move into this stuff. But I'm telling you, we can't let ourselves remain in anything less than true faith. Because, listen, a lot of people think they're in faith and they die speaking faith. But we have to realize faith works. See, we have one of the questions. Well, what if, what if we have believed 100% somebody's healed, but we don't see it healed? You haven't believed 100%. Right. Why? Because faith works. Well, but, but what about this? No, there is no what about. Well, but if I, what if I lay hands on somebody and they don't get healed? Don't waste your time. You've already decided to cut yourself out. You've already decided what if. No, what if the word of God is true? Oh, guess what? It is. So there's no if. There's no if, and they lay, believers lay hands on the sick and they recover. When a believer lays hands on the sick, they recover. End of story. That's it, right? And it all comes back even with the idea of authority. Because if you're going to walk in faith, you're going to walk in authority. You're going to walk and you're going to command. Faith commands. Faith speaks. Faith hears. Faith sees. Faith can be heard. Faith can be seen. Oh, why? Because it's life. Yeah. 